Hey, today we're gonna to do a walkthrough of DS, the cross-platform design system framework. Let's go ahead and jump right in. First thing we're gonna do from the command line is run yarn create DS. And this is gonna scaffold out not only a DS project, but actually example code bases that show the consumption of your DS project as well. So uh, first things first, we are going to give it a name. Let's go with stokend. And this is going to take a couple minutes. Um, you can run this in bare mode where you don't create these example code bases and it's much quicker. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we definitely need these example applications. So it's going to take a minute to download those. In the meantime, I'll explain a little bit more how this works. So you have your DS project and it compiles SDKs, native SDKs with wonderful developer ergonomics for each of your platforms that you target. So those sit in your applications just like any other library. And uh, one of the cool aspects of DS is that it has the ability to hot compile these changes in. And we will definitely be covering that today. So I am going to go ahead and get all of these example applications running. The native apps are a little bit more cumbersome. So let's go ahead and fast forward this part. Ooh, one more quick note before we start. As I mentioned, we're going to be hot compiling the, your DS project into native SDKs. So we're gonna be running servers for all of these applications. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how to start all those. And then yarn start Android. And then you guessed it, yarn start web. And here's the part where we fast forward. All right, so as you can see here, we now have our three example applications running. This is a native iOS app, this is a native Android app, and this is a web app written in React. So let's go ahead and pop into a text editor here. And as we mentioned, we have our three application examples that are consuming your DS project. Your DS project is in the source folder and the main file here is your design system.ts. So your design tokens are composed using TypeScript. As you can see, this starter project ha already has a lot of design tokens that are um, showing some example usage, and these are what um, are being consumed via the native SDKs on the, the native platforms and, and the web as well. So why would you want to use DS and define all of your, your tokens this way? Well, because you can change one thing and see it propagate through all of your applications. So let's go ahead and do that here. Let's go with uh, this light purple color and I'm just gonna save this TypeScript file and because we have our uh, hot mode running, we can see that propagate through all of our platforms and your developers who have consumed your SDKs don't need to change a thing. As you would expect, you can change any of your design tokens and see them update here in real time, but let's go ahead and add on another layer of your full team's workflow and include a design file. So DS supports Figma, Sketch, uh, Adobe XD, and uh, Envision DSM. For today's example, we're just going to use Figma. So let's go ahead and grab a Figma file. We're gonna use this one here, which I have pre-prepared. And it's as easy as copying this URL and jumping over to your .dsrc and plopping it in the services array and saving. And then back here in the command line, we're gonna run yarn ds extract. So in the background here, we're extracting normalized, strongly typed styles and images for all of your tokens that you want to bring in from Figma. So um, this isn't bringing in everything that you have within your file. It's only bringing in the elements that you intend to reuse across your file or across several design files. And those are items such as components, color styles, gradient styles, effect styles like shadow, and of course, text styles. So. Um, so let's take a look at what was generated from that extraction we ran. Um, over here in your assets folder, you will see all of the images that you included as components from Figma. 
and those are available in a variety of resolutions so they are easy to wrangle on the native platforms especially you also see any fonts you included in your textiles and then over here in your designs folder within your Diaz project proper you will see this, this TypeScript file. You will see this clean set of strongly typed design token components that are making use of the Diaz prefabs. So this looks really nice already. Let's go ahead and tie this into our design system. And we will jump back over to our main file here and we'll go ahead and import it. Now that we have this imported, we can make use of it. So let's go ahead and change that color that we changed earlier. And we will just pull our colors off of our generated design token components coming in from Figma. So we have access to these colors here. Let's uh, switch this to this one and go ahead and save once again. And we'll see those updates in relatively real time. Um, of course, you can change other things here, not just colors so let's go ahead and do something a little more interesting and maybe let's uh let's change this shadow and i will let's oops let's move this over a little bit and increase the size so you can actually see that when we change it and so instead of using this here we'll just pull that shadow off of here and Let's go something a little tighter, save it. You can see that shadow change on the, the avatar. And one more time, get a bigger shadow this time. Boom, and so you can see that updating across the web and the native platforms, and that is definitely something to feel good about. So let's do one more example here. Let's go ahead and grab these uh, images, responsive images and import these and then let's make use of one let's see where's an image being used here all right let's replace this tiled piece in the the masthead so we'll go ahead and let's go with the hot dog first that sounds good boom so you might be asking yourself now what if my designers end up fiddling with the token values. Am I able to keep my native applications in sync? And the answer is absolutely. So let's go ahead and change one of these colors to something we haven't used yet. And maybe we'll switch it to yellow and we'll keep it named the same thing. And when we pop over here and run another extraction, you will see that that uh, updates the the value here in your generated TypeScript file. And if we make use of this, um, of course that will, oh, it was actually this one here. And then we, if we resave it where it's used, then you'll see that update. Look at this beautiful design. I think we might have to update the starter project with these this new scheme. Um, well, I think you can already imagine the implications of using DS across your native applications, your web applications, and your design tools. So we'll just go ahead and move into the final piece here, which is to just briefly show what consumption looks like. So let's hop into the examples here. I'm most familiar with web, so I'm just going to open that up. As you can see, this is a React app, and we are consuming the design system in a couple different ways. We're actually using pieces of it from JavaScript and other pieces of it from SCSS SDK. So let's take a peek here quickly at the, the JavaScript. You can see we are um, attaching it here for hot mode purposes. And then here, then we're able to use this day of this DS object, DS object, and uh, pulling the strings from it and other things like this loading animation which um, if we play this here, you can see there's actually a Lottie animation that's playing there. And uh, yeah, let's hop over to the SCSS file. You can see we're importing the SDK here. You're able to use SAS tokens as you would imagine. You also can make use of these higher order uh, mix-ins as well. If you're running pure CSS, you can actually make use of vanilla classes. 
Well, I think we're going to wrap the video up here today. We're excited to onboard you soon. We are bringing in new cohorts every week and we are learning from all of them. There's other things to be excited about as well. Um, I'm most excited about dropping our documentation generator. We have this working and it is super cool. All right, well, I'm gonna cut this here and I will see you out there.